So we're going to talk a little bit today about how we can optimise our sperm selection methods um, using a combination of HBA testing and PIXI. Um, for those of you who are less familiar with these techniques, they're enabling us to select mature sperm for use in treatment cycles. Now, why is sperm important? Let's take it back a step and think about the patients that we see every day in our clinic. We are commonly exposed to patients that will present with recurrent implantation failure, recurrent miscarriage, or frustratingly unexplained infertility, where we utilize the tools that we have at our disposal, but we can't identify a potential cause for their infertility. Now, in many of those cases, I think it's becoming increasingly obvious that sperm has an enormous impact on the likelihood of achieving a pregnancy. And if we think about the embryo, 50% of that genetic material comes from the sperm. Now, when we perform our egg collections and we recover our eggs, we have no real means of selecting out which eggs we're going to use, albeit assessing potentially for maturity. But we do have a choice about which sperm we're using. And before we go further, I'd like to just mention um, Esther. Esther presented at our clinic uh, with unexplained infertility. She'd had treatment elsewhere. Um, she had failed fertilization through IVF. So next step naturally was ICSI. She did have fertilization as a result of ICSI, did fall pregnant, but she then moved categories and became a recurrent miscarriage patient because she failed to maintain those pregnancies. And I'll come back to Esther a little bit later on. So let's talk a little bit more about the sperm. Now, we know that sperm has to undergo um, a number of dynamic changes in order for it to become a fully mature sperm. And the reason that maturity is important is because an immature sperm in natural fertilization, it can't fertilize an egg. And that's really important because there's a number of key changes that that sperm has to undergo. So we see cytoplasmic extrusion, uh, we see um, heat shock protein 2 A2 A2 expression, uh, plasma membrane um, remodeling, and we also find that we have the formation of the zona pellucida binding sites. But also very importantly, we see hyaluronic acid or HA binding sites form. Now these binding sites are very, very important because this is how we're enabling um, the meeting of the sperm and the egg. Where that maturation fails, we're going to see negative um, impact on the sperm. So we may find we have retention of cytoplasm and histones, reduced genomic integrity. We'll have an increased frequency of chromosomal aneuploidies. Um, and quite often, these sperm are of poorer maturity, but not always. Now, if we look back to nature, and what better way to learn about what we're doing in the laboratory by looking at actually how Mother Nature designed things to work, we know that surrounding the oocyte, um, there is HA expression. It's a key component of the extracellular matrix around that um, cumulus. And the mature sperm, which have the receptors that can bind to this expression, um, are able to then go on and fertilize the egg naturally. This is in contrast to an immature sperm. It hasn't formed those receptors, so it can't bind to the egg. So the egg is almost acting as a physiological sperm selector. It's only allowing those mature sperm to bind, and these are the sperm which will have completed their full um, maturation. So let's think back to what we do in the laboratory. We know that we've got an egg which has quite a, quite a robust system for selecting the better sperm. So what do we do in the lab? We look at the sperm. We count the number of sperm. We'll assess how many are swimming, be quite critical about the morphology. But what's that telling us? That, to a degree, is telling us that we can use that sperm sample within the laboratory. But what it doesn't tell us is anything about the physiological ability or the natural ability of that particular sperm to fertilize an egg. And I'd like to introduce the two techniques that we are using in our laboratory to make sure we're optimizing our sperm selection, and that's HBA assay, so hyaluron binding assay, and PIXI dishes, which is physiological ICSI. So the HBA assay consists of um, a microscope slide which has been modified um, so that it has solid state hyaluronic acid. When the sperm sample is placed in contact with that hyaluronic acid, we see two different distinct behaviors. Sperm which are immature, they don't have those um, HA receptors, they don't react in any way to that HA coating, they'll carry on freely swimming. However, sperm which are mature, they will contact 
that synthetic um, hyaluronic acid, and they'll exhibit vigorous tail thrashing, um, but with no forward uh, movement. So they're kind of spinning around quite cute on their head. Now, by looking at those two different behaviours, we can identify which of those sperm are mature and which of those sperm are immature. So we are physiologically able to select the sperm out in a similar way to the oocyte. So we had a look at how this would work. You know, is, is sperm maturation a problem for the male population? So in 2014, we uh, piloted a trial of incorporating HBA testing into our routine semen assessments at no extra cost to our patients. Our initial trial included 426 men, and we found that roughly a third of them would have low levels of mature sperm within their sample. And really importantly, of that 29%, 12% of those patients we would have described as normal zoospermic. So there was an issue that we wouldn't have picked up. Um, we've now fully integrated HBA testing into our routine clinical practice, and this does, importantly, remain at no additional cost to our patients. So now we've got this information. We know that we have a population of men that have poor maturity within their sample. What do we do? We offer them Pixie. So in a similar way um, that the sperm is able to bind on those um, dishes, as on the slides, we have um, a modified dish which also contains that synthetic solid-state HA. Those mature sperm will bind to that hyaluronic acid, and we can select these sperm out and use them in conjunction with our ICSI procedure. So we are not only picking um, morphologically normal motile sperm, we know that physiologically they're also mature sperm. So can this technique actually be used to help improve outcomes? And there have been a number of studies. Um, some of them have had somewhat conflicting results. And I do believe that some of those studies, the important take-home message has been slightly masked by the, the data set. So there was a randomized controlled trial involving um, 802 couples in 10 different centers, um, showing that there was an increased clinical pregnancy rate and also a reduced pregnancy loss rate when selecting sperm, which had low levels of maturity using the, the sperm selection method of HA binding. And again, other studies have demonstrated increased utilization and pregnancy rates and also reduced miscarriage rates. And in the UK, there was a recent publication um, of the data from the HabSelect trial, which again, a multi-center uh, randomized control trial. And this is where I believe the data was slightly masked Although Pixie had no increase in the live birth rate, we did see a significant reduction in the miscarriage rate per couple treated, and that did give an overall increase in live birth per clinical pregnancy. This was a particularly seen in older women in helping them avoid miscarriage. And again, further studies have uh, looked at correlations with fertilization, pregnancy, and cleavage rates against patients with have, that have varied um, HA binding scores, so varied degrees of maturity. And we see that when we're looking at our, our group A, when we've got quite low levels of mature sperm within the sample, in comparison to our patients with group D with normal levels of maturity, we can see that there are a correlation between these, these um, indicators of success. And using that HBA test as a tool, we can identify which patients are most likely to benefit from this sperm selection method. So at Hearts and Essex, we've been forming PIXI treatment um, since 2014. Um, we've performed 420 PIXI cycles in uh, a four-year time frame, and we've got 262 low uh, live birth outcomes. We included uh, patients who had a low HBA score, so less than 65% of their sperm sample were mature, but it was also proved to be quite a popular technique with patients, so we did also perform at patient request. So looking at our data, uh, we can see that although it failed to reach statistical significance, outcomes with uh, PIXI, uh, both positive HCG rate and clinical pregnancy rate, were superior to our patients that had underwent um, ICSI or IVF. And when we broke this data down, we saw quite striking um, differences in the, the ages. So for our, our ladies, our younger ladies under 34, um, no real difference. However, as the lady reaches 35 and upwards, those differences in clinical pregnancy rates did reach statistical significance. And looking at our live birth outcomes, Again, we saw that there was a trend for an increased um, live birth rate with patients who underwent PIXI treatment compared to ICSI treatment. But significantly, and in, in, in keeping with previous studies, we found that the level of miscarriage was statistically significantly reduced. So we were looking at around about a 3% miscarriage rate for our patients who underwent 
uh, pixie treatment. So to sum up, um, I do believe that HBA testing, assessing maturity, is actually giving us much greater insight into male factor infertility. It's an easy to use, rapid assessment. Um, there's very little additional training. It can very easily be integrated into your standard clinical SOPs. And we know that we do have thresholds of clinical significance. We can use this test in conjunction with PIXI, enabling us to identify mature sperm with better genetic integrity. And again, easily incorporated into clinical practice. There's no expensive equipment required. And we do have improvements in implantation and clinical pregnancy rates and also very significant reduction in miscarriage rates. Now, for the majority of you, I would imagine you are familiar with the HFEA. The HFEA is our governing body in the UK. And quite rightly, the HFEA is there to protect and safeguard our patients. And there's been a lot of focus and attention on add-ons. So these are therapies that the clinics are offering that perhaps we don't as yet have sufficient evidence to support their use. Each of these add-ons is assigned a colour. So at present, there is nothing which is assigned green by the HFEA. We have a couple of uh, techniques which are um, assigned as amber. Um, but there are a large number of studies which are techniques which are assigned as red. And red is saying that there is no evidence to su uh, support the use of a particular technique. And I quote from the HFEA uh, that there's been a number of studies comparing PIXI with standard ICSI. However, very little evidence to suggest any benefit, any benefit of using it at all. A large randomized study was recently carried out which showed that PIXI did not increase the chances of having a baby. So if we take that as, as true, there's no increase in the chances of having a baby. I would argue that the reduction in miscarriage is a very, very important clinical outcome and indeed is a very, very significant um, factor that we need to avoid for our patients. So whilst the jury might be out as to whether or not we are improving our overall live birth rates, I truly believe that pre preventing miscarriage wherever possible is incredibly important. And I'll draw you back to Esther. So Esther has now had a number of treatment cycles with ICSI, and she's miscarrying. Her partner has a DNA fragmentation test done all before she came to our clinic and found very heavily levels of fragmented DNA. And the couple were advised that their only chances of conception were to use donor sperm. They came to our clinic for a second opinion, and we evaluated his sperm, and he did indeed have a very significantly low HBA score. However, that sperm was perfectly usable with Pixie, and Esther and her partner are now a very proud parents to a beautiful baby girl. Thank you.